back to Two Nuts, One Sack. Guys, we got a very special guest. Corday Snell. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? How you good, good, man? I'm good, man. I'm chilling. So the Two Nuts, One Sack community knows of you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Let's we do it. We talk a lot of shit about you. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they never, I don't think they know who you are. Yeah. This is officially Corday, the one that Ryan has beef with. Yeah. The, That's obviously other, why he's not here. Yeah. My other black friend. Yeah, yeah, your other black friend. <laughs> I don't know if he thinks I'm only allowed to have one or something. It's it's definitely a fight. You know, you ever see not in a team movie? Someone be one black dude at this party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And like you're the guy. You're I'm like the guy. you're the OG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, OG. Yeah, OG doing it. And but it's funny because you got you got two. You got one and a half black friends. Yeah, because you got because Ryan's half. He's light skinned Yeah, so he counts as half. Joaquin. Right. We do have so two and a half, so I was right. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say two and a half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so two and a half, yep. So what you been up to, man? Ah, uh, man, started a new job. I'm cool, man. It's the commute. <sighs> Is it good? Yeah, oh, dude. If I catch all the lights, it takes me three minutes to get to work. Like, oh, that's me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's 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 great. Versus uh, before I used to take, <laughs> I used to take 40 to 50 minutes. Uh, sometimes it was bad. It'll take fifty five, and then on the way home, it was always like forty five minimum. Yeah. To like an hour and ten, it could be. So three minutes to work, six minutes back. Yeah. The, the, the funny thing about it, I let my car warm up. That takes longer than getting home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. my car doesn't even warm up to yeah. get here. Yeah. Now I just turn it on, and I just yeah. like you know, poor thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just go. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been, I've been letting it warm up because I used to just like, Oh, I'm not driving that far. I ain't gonna fuck it up. And then like, what time was, do you start though? Uh, seven 45. So I'll start early, which is okay. funny. Cause I remember at my other job, we started, we had to be there by eight or like eight 30 at the latest. Mm-hmm. I remember because it was in Oakland. Um, I would try to get there by eight because the earlier you leave, the less traffic you have to deal with versus the later you leave. It kind of gets like more intense. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, let's say where I lived. If I left at seven, um, uh, I would kind of like kind of pass the most of the traffic. But if I left at six fifty, I would get I'll get there super fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I left the house mm-hmm. at seven ten or seven, God forbid, seven fifteen, I wouldn't get to work till about eight fifteen, eight thirty. Yeah. But if I left at seven, I can get to work probably at. 7:55. It it makes me so mad how like a two or three minute difference yep. Yep. can change the trajectory of how fast you get somewhere. I remember the bay. It's been yeah. pissing me yeah. off. I remember I That's left a two hour difference if you miss it by three minutes. I remember I left at 6:50 one time. I got to work at 7. I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, I'm gonna leave 15 minutes later. So it was like 7:05, 7:07, and then I left later. And then uh, <laughs> I got to work. At eight twenty, I was like, "What the? Yeah. F- what the?" F-? <laughs> and I was like, "Why are you late?" I was like, uh, "I left ten minutes later, so you need to leave earlier." I was like, "It was only ten minutes." And now, so then I found the sweet po- spot. It was like before seven. If you leave before seven, you get to work on time. Yeah. So what about a uh, comedy shows? A oh, comedy shows been great, man. Um, so that's what I, okay, this is what I really want to know. Yeah. Because you gotten to do some cool things, and I want the I want people to know. Oh, right, this, right, right, right. It's the like people, who who are you? The people and why don't know. we keep mentioning you? The people don't know. So my name is Corday Snell. I'm a stand up comedian. Been doing stand up for about eleven years now. Um, super dope. Uh, I've opened for Eddie Griffin, Pablo Francisco, James Davis, Brett Ernst. That's my homie. Shout out to Brett Ernst, by the way. Uh, Cobra Kai. Uh, they're doing a. Um, I think they're doing a sequel to uh, the karate kid or a follow up to the karate kid. I hope you in it, Brett. Um you mean the show, right? Or no, the no, no, movie, no the actual the, movie. The actual movie. You know, oh. they, like that they, they've uh Ralph Malchio and uh the guy from Cobra Kai, the mm-hmm. other guy, uh-huh. have signed on to do like a, a follow up like years later to what's going on. That's cool. So yeah. Would it be in like would it be tangent with the series? I don't know. I don't know. It was it was just like an announcement like they're they're things are coming together. Okay. It's like one of those things. Like, That'd be interesting because yeah. I actually liked the first season of Cobra Kai, and yeah. then I just kind of fell off. But that was yeah. it wasn't because it was bad. I yeah, no, no, it was it was super good because I mean it, it literally started on YouTube, YouTube TV or YouTube, YouTube Red. Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it was YouTube, when Red. it was YouTube Red. Yeah, yeah now it's YouTube TV. Now it's YouTube TV. There's been so, hella iterations of that too. Yeah, that was ADD moments. Sorry, yeah, they, now they keep they keep changing it because it's like a new thing, newer thing, right, whatever. Right. Um, so yeah, the they're doing that. Um, so like been doing stand up for a long time. Uh, two weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, I was in San Luis Obispo doing shows out there, headlining shows. 
I got one I'm going back in December to Santa Maria. Um, I have a few shows coming up, like Sacramento, Santa Maria, Salinas, and like some other stuff. Hopefully, I'm back at the Improv at some time this month or in December. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. What What's it like dating as a like up and coming yeah. like artist? Because like I tell you, like realistically for me, yep. Dating is the hardest thing. I'm nobody yeah. until I'm on stage. Yep. And all of a sudden, and this is going to sound very douchey, but like it's true. Like yeah. this just happened to yep. me on Friday yep. when, at our show. Like people are on me. Mm-hmm. They're like, they're running up, chasing our van yeah. just to talk to me. They're, yeah. you know, if they want to take pictures, they're rubbing your back yeah, all of a sudden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, like I just got a love letter not yeah. too long hey, ago. There you go. <laughs> there you go, man. Like, yeah. Like I'm serious. Yeah. But then like on a regular day, don't. No one bats an eye. So it's the funniest thing in our, uh, I always say this, like, same thing, right? Like, you get off stage, people are like, oh, like, you're trying to sell merch. People want to talk to you. Sometimes people don't want to buy your merch, but they want to talk to you. They want to get a picture or something like that. Uh, when I get to make it to a big level, I'm like, hey, if you want a picture, like, buy a piece of merch and I'll give a picture with you, kind of a, like a cheap right. way. So people do that. It's a way to make money. Right, right. Like, comedians ain't out here, like, I've been coming there, not making a huge amount of money, so right. it's a way to kind of, hey, man, help me pay, for, get my gas back, kind you of guys a thing. actually make significantly less than bands do. bands do yeah because you guys perform more yeah but may but like you guys will work for 10 or 15 bucks yeah versus i'm not we work won't for, work i'm not work for 10 or 15 bucks okay but, yeah. but you guys used to or you yeah, know yeah yeah you know what i mean like yeah you can't lie there was times i remember just yeah, drink just doing, tickets was to pay yeah sorry to interrupt this conversation guys i gotta tell you about our sponsor of today it is catahoula coffee as always Go to catahoulacoffee.com, type in promo code 2NUTS to get 15% off your very first purchase. Guys, we got over, well over 15 different regions of coffee right now. I think like 20. And you guys know when I say we, I still work there, I'm going to be making your order. So if you're going to order shit, make it worth it, get a little something by me. Guys, you have to get a cup of Catahoula coffee for your house every single day. I have a cup every single morning. And I promise you, I'm not going to steer you wrong. You know, Ryan always says, get yourself some mocha, get yourself some Hank, and get yourself some uh, Mexi Mocha powder. Guys, 15% off your very first purchase. Now back to the show. Before. Drink tickets. Yeah. yeah. When I, got, I remember the first time I got paid 10 to 15 bucks, oh, this is amazing. Or first time I got 50, I was like, oh, shit, damn, I can right. buy food with this. Spend, <laughs> you buy something and it's like 25 bucks. He's like, damn, I just wasted like half the money I just made off this <laughs> yeah. show. So I was like, or you might get an extra drink or two and you're like, oh, fuck, I just, damn, I can't <laughs> keep this money. Um, but yeah, so back to so back to dating. So I was saying like getting off stage, people talking to you, selling merch, chicks in your face, stuff like that. Yeah. And then like now they want to talk to you because you made them laugh. You made them feel some type of way. You might I might I used to do a lot of crowd work. So I pointed to them and said that like they were super cute. Um and then the humbling experience is when I could just walk to another bar and nobody knew I was performing and then nobody talks to me. So you yeah. know you saw about before the show. Right. Me is after the show if they wasn't there. Like I I performed at the improv, the San Jose improv. Where it was like a sold out show, I think it was like 400 people, and then I walked around the corner to downtown San Jose where it was popping, and everybody just I'm just walking in I'm like these motherfuckers don't even know I just performed in front of a sold out crowd, right? And then they just like oh who's like okay hey what up whatever. But then another time I did the same thing performed in front of performed in front of a sold out crowd, and then everybody came up to me oh my god you was amazing you were super funny and this chick who I was. I don't know, we'd be, like, talking on and off and stuff like that. She was like, I don't like all the attention you're getting. And I was like, I was like, man, if you don't celebrate me. <laughs> I was like, don't be jealous now. What, what do you think, like, a, like, trying to find a partner yeah. that understands the grind up, yeah. right? Because when you start, when people start seeing this, like, my parents saw this on Friday. Yeah. This girl was, like, all over me, looking for me all night. And it yeah. wasn't, like, 600 people there. Like, yeah. she could have just went around the corner and yeah. was there. But yeah. She was looking for me, and my parents were like, oh, like, mm-hmm. what, like get off my son, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, this is like somewhat like, I, it's normal now. Mm-hmm. The past six shows, this mm-hmm. is something like this has happened. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I'm excited for this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I'm excited. But like, people don't, they get so amazed. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they start seeing like the little things that come with getting a little bigger, yeah, yeah. as it as a small independent artist, 
a lot of chicks who I meet and talk to after shows, especially if I like get their number, we talk for a while. They'd be like, "How are you single?" Or they immediately start thinking, "I have hella groupies at every show." Yeah, and they'd be like, "So do I have to compete with your other groupies?" And I'm like, "What groupies?" <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the groupies I usually get is a chick who does want to talk to me. Yeah, to tell her boyfriend how funny she thought I was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is always funny. And it was like, well, so you want me meeting hella girls? I'm like, yeah, I meet hella girls, but sometimes it doesn't go no place. And especially because for me now, I'll be performing a lot. I just try to get chicks' Instagrams. Yeah. Because that way, instead of me always trying to just I slide it. the line. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I just like get their Instagram because it's a way to get followers. And instead of just like trying to get get at a chick, I'll just say, hey, nice meeting you. I'm like, oh, for sure, let us know if you're back in the area. Because chicks bring people to shows. Right. So I'll get a chick's Instagram for two reasons. Like, let's say if I'm trying to talk to you, I got your Instagram. Oh, right. And then um, and then if you don't, I'll just like keep in touch anyway. Because sometimes I'll be like, oh, whatever. Like, she don't talk. Okay, whatever. But hey, nice meeting you. Like, nice meeting you too. Like, okay, cool. I'll be in, I'll be in your area. Maybe in a month or two, she's like, oh, let us know. We'll come out. We'll support. But yeah, bring all your friends. Because chicks love to bring hella chicks to a show. And I'm like, yo, we had such an amazing time. I'm like, hell yeah. Chicks buy merch and all that type of stuff. So yeah, that's usually what happens. Now, you were saying dating chicks on the way up. That's a hard struggle that I struggle with right now, honestly. Because sometimes, like I always think, like I want a girl who's with me on the way up. Sometimes it's hard to find that girl who believes in you on the way up like sometimes they want the finished product or sometimes you meet a girl who wants to date you and they're not about what you're about like they're not really about like a stand-up game or they're at first they with it when yeah. they meet you yeah they find you a stand-up they think you hilarious they think you cool and then you start telling them how much you be traveling because i travel a lot so it's like selena's uh st louis the best folks santa barbara la you're still uh, pretty regional yeah west coast yeah. but but you're traveling farther than a lot of other comedians yeah i mean i'm i'm right now like i'm up and down california's coast right like so okay if i meet you in santa maria but i live in the bay right how are we gonna make this work <laughs> right. i'll be out back out here in a month right. okay no no let's say this like oh i live i know you live in the bay i live in the bay what you doing is a friday i got a show what about saturday i have another show right what about sunday I'm possibly going to this other show to try to get up there. Right. And shooting a podcast. Yeah. And doing a podcast. Like, so when are you free? Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's really not days to go out. I'm like, well, I'm free on those days. Right. Or sometimes if I got a big show that upcoming Friday, I might be hitting open mics those whole times. And then now they have to figure out a way to work their way into your life. And a lot of time they'll, they won't. Right. Like, when chicks, sometimes they say they'll make time for you, or chicks be like, well, if you really liked me, you make time for me. I'm like, if you really liked me, you will understand the little bit of time I have. I am making time for you, right. and you adjust around my schedule. Because, right. like, sometimes I've dropped stuff literally to work my way around somebody else's schedule, and they cancel, which I hate. Yeah. Because if I'm trying to not do a show on Saturday at 7, because I'm trying to take you out, mm -hmm. and then you flake on me last minute, I'm thinking of the two shows I probably could have got on. Right. I'm thinking of after that, what kind of material I could have pulled from those shows and edited it and clipped it up or stuff like that. Okay, so I'll stop you right here. One thing I'll say is to that, that wouldn't necessarily be their fault if you're like, I could have been on this show, but that is a struggle of being an independent artist to yeah. be like, damn, I know how valuable my time is worth. Yeah. And sometimes like, I don't see going on a date mm -hmm. as like a valuable, a valuable, for, like, Progression, Pro yeah. Going okay. on a date is not going to further me in comedy, right? Like that's and that's why I get. And mad this is at. my first love right here. Yeah, it's my first love right here. Like right. I, because the reason why I go so hard about it now is because I've put relationships or chicks I was talking to in front of comedy before. Mm -hmm. Like I remember a few times, homies was like, "Hey, bro, you out here dating, but yo, don't forget you still a comedian. Like, don't like get wrapped up." Or I've seen homies get wrapped up in a relationship, and then after the breakup, they don't know where to go after that. And now it's like, well, I was doing comedy, but I was with my girl and we was like working stuff out or their girl came to every show or their girl comes part of the show or oh, if I can't go, if my girl can't come. So then it'd be like this, all these other aspects to it. It was like, you can't come to the show if your girl can't come. Right. Like she's not a comedian. Like, oh, well, I just need to, I didn't like, oh, carpooling. Can my girl carpool with us? I'm like, she can't stay home. 
Like, what you mean? Like, why she got to come? Like, what? Like, is she like she holding medicine or something yeah. like that for you? Is she is she your cameraman or like that's what I feel like if you gonna have a girl who's really invested in you, have her be your cameraman. Have her work for you. OK, have so her work for you. Yeah. Actually, that's a good example. So now those girlfriend comes with us like we'll give her rides to the yeah. shows and stuff like that. She'll ride in the band van or yeah. we'll take her home and um, she'll actually be like she'll wait outside the van for us. And whatever we need. Hey, can you help me do this real quick? She's there. No, no questions asked. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's always down to help. So I think in that sense, like if your girls come to work and like, I totally agree with that. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. You know, that's a cool team. Yeah. But if you're not, then you're kind of just in the way. Like if a chick travel with me and the whole time I was there, she'd be like, babe, we need to get your rest. Hey, uh, let's, like, let me help you set up your beanies. Or let me help right. you set up your, uh, your, your merch, merch table and yeah. stuff like that. Like, let uh, me help you get it organized let for me, tonight. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, where we at tomorrow or something like that. Like, let's budget to try to like get most stuff or like this money, you know, like really like a partner. <laughs> almost like a tour manager. Almost person. like a tour manager, but it's really just like, but you, she's down to help you. Like you she's down to help you. And she's like invested. Right. That's what, that's what you really, you want a chick who invests in you. Cause it's funny because I'm thinking I'm a I'm a comedian on the rise, and sometimes right you got some chicks who invested in a dude in a a dude who's a trash local rapper, but they invest in their career. They be at the shows, they be dancing, they be like, oh my god, my bull, like he oh he rap, like you listen to his raps, I'm like this motherfucker trash. You're like he cool, he getting better, like I'm like what, like <laughs> this dude ain't good. Like yo, come to my show, see how funny I am, you know. And it, it, it's so it's just different because I don't know chicks fall in love with like rappers or if you can sing. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, I don't see a lot of trash singers who who chicks like like hold on to. You know, yeah, it's always the rapper icon kind of a thing. But you don't see them like as much as comedians. You know, because mm-hmm. you just gotta be a, you gotta be sexy first or make it first, and then you become sexy. Yeah. So okay, I want to kind of shift in a little bit going into the comedy world like what is one of your favorite shows you've ever done okay and then what is like the worst bomb you've ever had okay so opening for eddie griffin oh yeah. how did that fucking how did that even happen okay so let's break this down okay so san jose improv uh decided that they was gonna start doing an open mic once a month every second wednesday of the month the san jose improv hosts an open mic which really isn't an open mic it's actually an audition to see if you're funny enough to perform here at the club and open for people. Gotcha. Open or host. Open is when you feature, you do 25 to 30 minutes. Host is when you do 10 to 15, right? Right. I saw that they had that. It was a huge announcement as well. I knew what it was. This ain't no open mic. Y'all trying to y'all trying to bring people in, right? Mm-hmm. So I did the first show that, this was back in, I think, 2021. I was one of the, the funny thing about it, I went up third to last mm-hmm. and won. Now, you got to think about it. They had probably saw 30 comedians that night. Yeah, because we saw. I went to one like, yeah. with J.D. when yeah. he was in it. Yeah. And then when I was doing it, when, or then, it was five minutes for each person. Okay. And then, like, they was given letting everybody get their time, no matter how bad you did, no uh, matter how wacky you was. They just let everybody go. It's unless, a little harder now. Like, it was, like, so now it's harder. Now it's like if you ain't uh, doing good by the first minute and a half, they, like, they'll – like tell you to get off or yeah. something like that. Like versus that was the first time. Right. So right. so I ended up beta in the yeah, beta yeah. stages. So I, I remember I ended up winning that, not knowing that this was gonna be like a regular thing. The top two gets like card, gets called back and stuff like that. And um I mean I was I was coming out honestly I was becoming like man, they I did this, I did well, but they ain't like me and they didn't care about me. And I just stayed persistent. Right. Like, I, remember I got I got upset a few times, but they was like, hey, man, now nah, we liked you. We just trying to figure out and partner you with the right person. Right. Um, and then Eddie Griffin was coming to town and then I got the call uh, like the week prior, mm-hmm. uh, but couldn't say anything just for like legal situation. Right, or whatever. Right. And then um, they said Which I, almost wouldn't you. This is kind of like a separate thing. But yeah. Like, wouldn't you want to be able to tell people to like, dude, bring I was, people to the show? No, I was nervous, man. I no, was no, nervous. no, but like as as like the club, I'd be like, oh, the oh, the show was about to sell out. Oh, so they don't care. They don't, don't like, care. Don't say shit. But it was it was more of or it's the, the local it community was, scene. It's so this lo- local community scene, but also the like me. So it's basically like they hadn't signed off 
yet officially. Uh, so it was like, you know how they be like, well, I got some stuff in the works. You know, yeah. <laughs> I got some stuff in the works. I can't tell you what's yeah, going on. Yeah, but like, trust me, yeah, big tr- things are coming. Big things are coming. <laughs> and so then this time it actually happened. Yeah, so it was one of those things. And then they said, when we crossed the T's, dot the I's, his management team and everybody else agreed to what was going to be and like who was going to open for him. Then you could say something. And they told me I couldn't do that until um, Monday around 4 p.m. And I remember when that happened and when I knew it was going to happen, I didn't want to post about it because mm-hmm. I didn't want to seem like I was bragging. And also, I didn't want to fall victim to like, man, I over up Eddie Griffin, man. You want to respect me? What the hell, man? I don't want to be one of those people ever. Yeah. And then just like had that one person, one time you open up for this national tour headliner and never again. Yeah. Now, when I went there, he, he, it was dope as hell. Uh, I got to meet him. He told me I was funny. He told me yeah. I was funny. And I was like, I grew up watching you, dude. You think I'm funny? Hell yeah. And then uh, he said, I watched the tape. You funny as hell. Then I got to perform with him. And he was like, yeah, man, he been rocking all night. You you funny as hell, man. You funny this whole weekend. has been dope. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm funny? Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Eddie. Uh, there was only one thing I was upset about. Uh, not really upset. It was just so there was supposed to be a writer or writers like we usually oh, like, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, his writer supposedly was supposed to be he needs a brand new pair of Air Force Ones. The whole like every before every show, mm-hmm. and he wasn't wearing Air Force Ones. <laughs> everybody asked me, so we said wearing Air Force Ones. I was like, now nah, he switched it up. He wore a different shoe now. Yeah, like that a, was a rumor, kind of yeah. like. So, is this gonna be a real thing? Yeah, yeah. So that's funny. That was hella funny, uh, and that was super dope. Now my worst bomb. Uh, I'll say was I think it was in 2018. Um, my homie put me on the show. He told me how to get there early, mm-hmm. uh, and then I would go up. So he's like, get there early. He's like, the show started at seven or something like that. He was like, be there at like five thirty or five yeah. fifteen. I think he said that because I'll be late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got there. He wasn't there. Nobody was there. They showed up like five forty five, and I'm help setting up. We all were moving chairs around. We all doing this all the kind of stuff. And then I'm okay, cool. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking to everybody, chilling, chilling with the homies stuff. People start coming in, and like I'm, I'm doing the door, like you know, for like security and like checking tickets and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Then the host is up, and then uh, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm talking to people, I'm like you know, I ain't roll my set because I have like a whole routine before I go up. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, oh, Corday, you next? Like the host is on. He's five, seven minutes in. Yeah. So he's only doing ten minutes. Some up next, I got this little bit of time to prepare. My mindset ain't there. And he was like, oh, yeah, by the way, don't do no new shit. Don't do no new shit. Like, do, do the old stuff. Do the old stuff. I'm like, what you talking about? I'm doing this new stuff, man. I'm going to do this new stuff. So, show is sold out. So I'm going to do this new stuff. This new stuff been working. And then, like, I went up there, bombed. They, like, nothing really got a laugh. So much so that I went back to my old stuff, and I didn't really get a laugh either. Damn. And I was just like, damn. And he was like, man, for real, you you – you bombed in front of a sold out crowd. I don't have to tell some comedians, man. You can't be just bombing and stuff. But then what I realized was one, I got there super early. Two, you told me something last second. Three, start fucking with your head. you start fucking with my head. Right. Then before, like, okay, well, let me try to go up here and then, like, figure something. And then you told me, don't do new shit. Mm-hmm. Threw me all completely off. And also, I went up to the bar because I was ill prepared. I didn't go to my schedule. And then I'm fighting between should I do new jokes or you know, it's one of those fucking moments. I'm going to do what I want. Right. I ain't listening to you. I'm going to do what I want, right, kind of a right. thing. And then I bombed that time. And I was in 2018. And I still remember that. It, there's nothing worse than like pissing off the people that like booked you. Yeah. That always kind of sucks. Even yeah. though, even if they like mm-hmm. screw you over like mm-hmm. that, like kind of psych you out. Mm-hmm. It still sucks because, like, that happened to us at Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. Fans were awesome. Yeah. People loved us. It was just our backing tracks went out. Yeah. Every single one of them. And Your what the, went out? Our backing tracks because we don't have a bass player. Gotcha, gotcha. So, like, okay. the computer does that. Okay. Um, But, like, the people that booked us, they were like, we know. That shit sounded <laughs> whack. <laughs> they were like, your band was not $500 worth. Ah, oh, <laughs> damn. They were barely paying us today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Damn. And so we were like, you know. We get it. Like, it yeah. it hurts us to, yeah. like, be a disappointment to yeah. you. But, yeah. This is going to be red flag, green flag with Corday Snell. Here we go. All right. You recently – we one of our videos yeah. went kind of – Oh, oh big, yeah. Kind of got, got some traction. Yeah. Because you said – Toenail polish. If you don't wear toenail polish, if chicks don't wear toenail polish. It's a red flag. It's a red flag. That means they dirty. Are we still on that? Is man, we ain't changed. We doubling down. All right, because <laughs> I've seen more chicks with toenail polish. I remember I went on a date with a chick, 
uh, a few a while ago, and she had no toenail polish, and it just threw me off. And I was like, she looked cool, but the toenail polish threw me off. And it felt like she was hiding her feet, like she yeah. seemed like she was hiding the secret she didn't want to tell. And I was just like, it's that toenail polish. I know what it is, because she had like her fingernails done, but not the toes. So it shows you don't take care of the small things, yo. All right, is that a total like? Like is that an ick for you actually? It's an ick, yeah. It's like kind of an ick. Uh, it's like it's like a it's like a what you hiding, yo? That's what I, I immediately think. I'm oh, like, oh, you don't like if they're wearing toenail polish? No, I, I don't like if they're not. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. like if they're not. But so it was like if you got your hands done but not your feet done, doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense, right? When you just... falling, you falling short somewhere, right? You know, that's kind of like somebody who got like a nice suit on with some busted shoes. Did yeah. did what? So or you, you got a Lambo and you still live in the hood. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. That's that's where your priorities are off. That's that's all the same thing. Well, I'm thinking somebody who uh, I'm thinking they trying to keep it real. Like I didn't, I got a Lambo, I got a record deal, I didn't move out the hood. I'm tr- staying true to my people. Now, if you pull up to an apartment complex, <laughs> that's different. All right, <laughs> like hold up, bro, like, you got an apartment? All right, that that's okay. That's it. That's it, man. All right, that's all the time we got for this week. Guys, thank you so much for watching Two Nuts One Sack. We post every Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Tell us what you guys think and what you guys want to see. And we will uh, see you guys next week. Yep. Peace. Good job.